All right, all right. <laughs> and I think we can pause right there. I think it's creepy as this afterwards, right? <laughs> all right. So, uh, so uh, guys, uh, we got an awesome show today. Uh, I, I know it's been a while, but uh, I got an awesome guest on today. So let me put out his name. Hey, I, man, we never, I never did. You know, I know we were talking earlier. I never get to clarify. You know, I always clarify, uh, you know, uh, names, right? Is it is it Tocha? Yeah, the the Hmong way is Tocha, and then uh, the Mika way is Tuocha, uh, Tuocha, Tuocha. Okay, so I just say to, Tocha. Tocha, yeah. Tocha. That's fine. I'll just say Tocha because that's easier for me. Um, you know, so uh, if you don't mind. <laughs> yep, no worries, so, uh, guys. Uh, uh, we're just starting here. If you guys just joined us, let us know where you guys are at. Uh, give this guy a holler. Uh, you're you're right now out, out in Chicago, right? Uh, no, uh, I moved uh, around this time last year um, to uh, California. So um, Sacramento, California is where I'm at right now. Oh, okay, cool. And then uh, tonight we're going to talk about, uh, well, let's go ahead and kick it off, right? So uh, uh, thanks, you guys, for joining us. Uh, this is show... 37 out among hustlers, you know, God, man, we can't believe we're, uh, we're this far into it. Um, but, um, uh, got awesome guests, uh, Torcha from SAC. Uh, appreciate you coming on the show. I've been following this guy for a while. Uh, when you were doing, um, spirit beside me, which is back, what? 2018. 2018. Yeah. So, I mean, dude, how old are you right now? Uh, just turned 30. Good. Turn 30. 30. <laughs> so like two years ago, I mean, dude, you were, dude, you were doing awesome stuff back then. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, you look hella young, you know, <laughs> when you were doing this, I was like, this guy looks like he's 16 and he's doing yeah. this big campaign for this, for this movie. And you, and you got all this attention, you know? So I was like, I was just like, Oh, following you. I'm like, man, this guy's, he's on to something, you know, you got this great uh, mindset or campaign that you got all this so i wanted to bring you on. i was like man this one day i want to interview this guy you know and just see you know what was spinning through his head throughout the whole time so guys give him a shout out uh let us know where you're from uh if you guys are in sac or california give him a holler and uh let's start bro so all right uh how'd you get started man how'd you get started yeah. filmmaking uh so um I always tell the story that I started uh, all the way back in high school uh, with just a couple of friends and a, a handy cam camera with the, you know, the DV tapes when it, it was still tapes at the time. And, um, you know, it was just me and a bunch of friends just trying to recreate those anime scenes, uh, especially uh, Naruto. Um, early on when it was just coming up and popular we reenacted a bunch of uh naruto scenes and uh just dragon ball z and try, trying to have superpowers on camera and um it was so fun um uh, you know it was one of those things where uh it showed that at an early age that you know whatever you imagine you can create and make it happen um so uh, that kind of mindset i took on um throughout my life and uh definitely pursued into that career field. I uh, got my associate's degree in 2010. Um, and then I worked on um, American Idol as a production assistant and then different uh, uh, freelance gigs from there. Uh, I started Windstruck Production. Um, back then, there wasn't a lot of filmmakers. So yeah. I opened up the uh, Facebook group Hmong Filmmakers. Um, and it grew from like 50, 100 to now uh, at least a thousand people plus. So uh, definitely a lot of people more interested in filmmaking. Uh, it's not an easy path, but, you know, it's a great uh, experience for sure. Uh, allows you to experience life in uh, so many ways. Yeah. So so you said how old were you back back then when you kind of first? Uh, I was first introduced into it uh, around 15, 16. Wow. There, yeah. That's cool, man. And just, I mean. I can, I mean, kind of following you, you served in the military, right? Yes. Uh, so in 2013, I enlisted into uh, the Air Force. All right. So what do you do there? I mean, pretty much. Uh, and there I do, um, uh, I, I'm in the logistics readiness squadron where I do vehicle maintenance for the Air Force. 
Um, and then um, I'm in the middle of uh, commissioning right now into to become an officer. So since I have my uh, bachelor's degree now, uh, that's what I'm working on. So hopefully by next year, 2021, I'll be uh, an officer by then. Wow, 2021. So yeah, well, I just want to give a shout out because, you know, much respect for you guys that do serve in, you know, the forces, I guess. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, appreciate, you know, because that takes dedication you know time and you know it's hard work so just want to call that out because you know you are serving so appreciate that um yeah. but let's get back so um so started when you were 15 and you know but you know what i i, I guess i want i mean because i wanted to get started on the movie because i mean there's a lot more questions i have more from there so uh those of you guys who have questions go ahead and comment below uh we'll we'll, we'll, we'll go through some of the questions there but uh, as far as the spirit beside me, what? How did you? Did you? Did you write that? I mean, yeah, uh, spirit beside me has been an idea since um, uh, early on when I was eighteen, nineteen, uh, when I was starting out. But uh, I knew that project was just too big at the time. So, um, spirit beside me was actually an idea based off of uh, us, other set of ideas. Um, so Spirit Beside Me is like a branch of the story, the main storyline, uh, kind of like a story universe that I have set up and um, want to create. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, with everything, I'll, anything always takes manpower and budget and resources. Um, so um, so I set that off to the side. But um, now that technology and uh, expenses of filmmaking has kind of uh reduced down to more uh availability to uh creators so in 2018 that's when i was ready to kind of launch the project pro uh, project into uh the community so but what, what was behind that i mean how did you how did you come up with that storyline i mean is it yeah what, the um that? yeah uh the inspiration definitely is from uh like um you know just imagination uh what it would be like to see how cool would it be to see a fantasy uh type film uh based on like Hmong mythology uh myth and lores and legends uh, characters uh -huh. with also inspiration you know inspired by hollywood uh type content as well like lord of the rings pirates of the yeah. caribbean uh those type of very over the top uh adventure-ish fantasy fiction oh, uh, those things definitely help so that's where you were going with that yes because i saw the armor and you know i'm like okay you know that's kind of cool because i'm i'm into like dungeons and dragons and stuff like that you know so i'm like okay you know that's pretty cool how you know you have the you have the armor and you know the swords and stuff like that so that's where you got okay cool so mm -hmm. and you were going to make it as a like a drama series right Something yes like yeah Yep. Uh, the intent is to make it into a drama series so that at least the project is a bit more manageable uh -huh. to do like a whole full fledged feature film fantasy world. You have to put tons and tons of resources into making it realistic. Um, I wasn't set on making like a low budget, uh, horrible looking uh, VFX film. So um, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to make sure that my full vision is is there so i broke up the project into a series format where it's episodic so that uh, i could finish one episode at a time um depending on the resources that i have and gain and uh, the audience that are interested into it so uh, launching the pilot episode was really critical in dictating what the future of spirit beside me would be like as a full episodic um series yeah that was kind of cool uh like what did you envision to be like you're talking about like dragons and stuff like that with special effects or here yeah um if if anyone's seen like the live action bleach um where it's set in like modern day japan but then um there's like spirits and things coming in and out and uh just attacking the the world the real world it's yeah. gonna it was similar it was gonna be similar to that um but obviously my own story okay, and storyline yeah. and everything so um if you can imagine that uh, that's that's where everything was headed towards cool cool and you know just just to get this out of the way was that was that like was this your biggest project today or is it with jet others yes uh so spirit beside me is my biggest project to date 
Uh, but with that said, there are multi there are and has been multiple projects in development currently. Um, so Spear Persimmon was launched in 2018, uh, completed near the end of 2018, and then 2019 came around, um, and then I got deployed during that time. Uh, uh, so I had to put the project on pause, and uh, so it's uh, been on pause, but it's been in creative development uh, this whole time. So it's not on pause, pause, but it is uh for production wise uh, on pause to gain resources uh to create the the rest of the series so that project is on pause and then also i'm working on uh, uh a full feature film for the the hollywood audience as well so that's kind of like a little insider that um no one knows about but that's a huge another huge project pro project that i'm working on <laughs> okay so when, when is that coming out or uh that one i can't uh, give out a lot of details on but <laughs> it, it's just in development um so uh, I have a, a great team in Hollywood and producers out there uh, already. So, um, you know, a lot of things are going to be pushed for that for, for that film particularly. But everything I do is going to help, you know, push my other creative work. So let's yeah. say that the success of my feature film here is uh, works out very well. Then that would just give me resources to finish Spirit Beside Me the way it's supposed to be finished. So gotcha. um, anything's gonna just gonna benefit the projects that i have my eyes on yeah so yeah so let's circle back to that because that's mm -hmm. like i said that was what inspired me to like go oh, this guy's this guy got something going on as far as how he did his campaign for this particular movie so i want to wonder i wanted to bring you back on for that so mm -hmm. so i mean as far as like like i wanted to know about the actors like do they contribute i mean did you did you pick the actors yourself would you did you have a team that helped you out or or so yeah so um a lot of the talent um uh i had in mind uh so once i uh chose uh the talents it's just a matter of reaching out to them and networking and making sure that um you know the the mindset was that i wanted to pick um historically um the best actors i could um that was well known in the Hmong industry and pretty much put like an a-list Hmong actors uh group together to make it you know comparable you know at the uh at the best that it can be at the Hmong level um that it was so that's the the intent was to mimic hollywood by bringing like you know the best that you can for yeah. the, our audience so in our Hmong audience at the time uh, that's what uh people were asking for so i mean all right so you, you had a pretty hot actress right did you did you say okay i need a hot one so you go okay pick her <laughs> she was probably like the hottest well um, around, it wasn't you had a whole list. based on hotness it was <laughs> more so based on the uh what, who fit the character of how i envisioned the character to, yeah. to be yeah. like and look like and you know we always need to have that um uh, the actors that we want to see more of and uh sure is definitely a an actress that people want to see more of and her fans definitely uh show that you know everywhere we went uh and toured with with her uh, she brought out a lot of fans that um wanted to see more of her and acting ability yeah so so that was kind of one thing i saw like did that help did you see that help the movie at all or i mean i, I would say yes right yeah definitely um uh, one of the strategies behind making a, a project um marketable is to have marketable cast and yeah. that's just a, a standard uh, filmmaking technique that everyone uses you have to have good cast good crew and a great creative uh, vision to support that and resources behind it to to make a successful project um you know and that formula typically helps catapult um a film to be successful but um you know uh we do the best we can with uh, what we got Okay, and then, uh, and then, um, what was that one guy's name? I, I, the um, <laughs> the younger dude, <laughs> Eugene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, he's not from the U.S., right? Yeah, he's not from the U.S. Um, he's from at the time Thailand. Uh, so that was one of the 
huge uh, limiting factors that we had to work around the schedule with because we were highly dependent on getting his uh, work visa approved and i was intent on getting him the correct visa to come into the u.s and you know some people do a lot of things that are you know just bring him under family or anything i actually went through the process of making sure that we had the him come under a talent um oh, uh, gotcha. visa but what i mean how did you did you see him act before or did you say you know we just wanted some international you know person to gather to make this bigger i mean what was the vision behind that yeah so um i've seen some of his work before um and he was definitely growing in his audience and making a huge wave of you know uh attraction to what his abilities were he he not only was a handsome uh guy but he was also very talented in his craft and uh, meeting with him and speaking with him over the phone finally yeah uh, was super great because even though um you know the different kind of uh countries and uh distance uh, the level of talent always shows no matter who you are because we're always we're people no matter who we are oh gotcha gotcha Cause I, you know, I, I kind of vision like, you know, the Bruce Lee thing, right? The, the Bruce Lee movies, right? He pulled like the best fighters, you know, right. and the, 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 the popular dudes, you know, and that's kind of, I think that that's kind of one thing that contributed to his movies is, you know, he got all the, the big guys in there, like, like the big basketball player, you know, and stuff like that, you know? So I, I think that was kind of, was that kind of like your logic there too? Like, you yeah, know? exactly. Uh, yeah. the way to make a successful project is to have the best of the, of the best at at the time and to what you can uh, afford and to to do and accomplish, and um, uh, and I believe we had uh, some of the most talented cast in in that film and uh, people definitely appreciated that. Yeah, that was, that's kind of cool, you know. Uh, what I mean, you had that vision already, um, but. You know, uh, when I when I was kind of following you, you say you guys had some challenges. You guys were actually going to tape it in the U.S., right? Yeah. So the original plan was to um, uh, film everything in Chicago, and uh, it will be always going to be a three day uh, shoot, uh, highly focused and uh, uh, planned out to be fully filmed in three days in Chicago. But uh, and that was in April, so. Um, after the Kickstarter, uh, we uh, were waiting. The only thing we were waiting now is the visa approval process. And so there was so, so much delays on the visa with back and forth, back and forth with the documents and correct documents with um, immigration and uh, everything that it pushed out everything out to uh, November. And um, But we didn't know it at the time. Looking back, uh, it, was, it was pretty crazy because we were trying to um fit the the schedule in line with what we promised but at the same time we had to uh work around real life obstacles and that was one of the major obstacles that set the delays behind was because we were waiting for our main talent to to show up so uh one of the major workarounds was okay if he can't come to the u.s we'll have to go to him so uh, in june early june we started planning to go to thailand and then wow. late June, we went to Thailand uh, for for one week. Yeah, and we uh, had the most bare minimum crew. We had to sacrifice uh, a lot of crew and uh, a lot of people, mainly me and uh, uh, my partner uh, early, and um, another actor, Chua, had to uh, pull double duty as actors, producers, and crew members uh, just to pull off this this uh these scenes how big, how big was that crew how big was that crew uh so the crew the crew if you I mean. separate out the main crew was just two people me and my partner but then if we wow. add in my actors yeah. that acted as support as well then it would be like three to four uh people okay yeah and, and then, uh, oh go ahead all that equipment and stuff like that you know like the armor and stuff like that and yeah so <laughs> The funny thing was we I packed in everything into three three big luggages um, as big as I can and fit into it. And luckily, well, uh, I was military, so I got those luggages for free. Uh -huh. um, 
sent, but the problem was that it had fake armor and fake weapons. So every country <laughs> that we stopped at, <laughs> when we stopped at China, they they stopped and looked into the bag. They're like, "Oh, why are you bringing all this stuff?" So yeah. I had to explain to them, uh, <laughs> you know, some reasons why we were bringing those things into China. <laughs> and then, uh, and then once we got to Thailand, yeah, um, it wasn't the the armor and swords, but it was the film equipment. And oh. so when we got to Thailand, they were like, "Why do you have all these equipment?" And um, and yeah. so I had to talk my way out of that too. And uh, luckily, uh, my persuasion skills were <laughs> good enough because if if they took that away, uh, we would have been screwed. So any point, yeah. at any point, we would that project would have failed. Yeah, that's that's funny. But, uh, yeah, you explaining that that's that's hilarious. But you know, hopefully, you know, I'm not sure you guys got through it. But uh, I'm sure they from far away they looked at it and goes, "Man, he's got some." some uh you know armory there <laughs> right. yeah and, yep, and that's the thing um you know i yeah i just had to talk my way out of it um, okay okay cool cool so and yeah, right. those are some of the obstacles that no one knows about and you know this is the first time i'm kind of sharing yeah, about publicly but you know there's there's so much but why didn't why didn't you just say you know screw it we'll find another actor here and we'll just make it make it so because you got everything here mm -hmm. you know you, you probably already picked up the site already you know film yeah. the filming spot or something i don't know what you guys call it um yeah location, location set. yeah so yeah what yeah what made you make that decision to go to like thailand so one of the the one major thing is i'm the type of person that likes to keep my word so whatever i i promised through my kickstarter campaign or stated that I was going to do, I want to maintain that promise. Uh, secondly, the whole campaign was built around uh, Eugen as the main star. Um, so a lot of his fans contributed into the project. And yeah, a lot of people would say, why don't you use someone in the US or and things like that? Well, the reason is, is because his fans were the ones that contributed to the Kickstarter and made the the film uh possible because it was what's, what's a kickstarter? A lot hey, of wait, explain that what what is a kickstarter is that like a fundraising yeah kickstarter is a crowdfunding campaign i could uh show it now um so we yeah. had a kickstarter um that uh we were we launched in like the first week of january and it was set for 30 days and uh over time, it slowly raised, but we were able to successfully raise fifty six thousand one hundred two dollars off God. of the uh, four hundred ninety four backers. Uh, super thankful for all the backers. Uh, wow. I, I still to this day think about my backers and uh, yeah, you know, uh, want to make sure that we finish the series. But we did finish the pilot episode as we promised with the uh, the budget, so everything was spent on this pilot episode. So. Uh, wow dude that's 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 an epic you know congrats to you i mean so you're saying majority of that kickstart fund came from him right well i wouldn't say come from him it came from the support of all the 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 cast members every like Shaw brought her fans into um yeah. the audience into the film uh eugene brought his fans and Lee brought his fans into uh yeah. elvis uh chore um even do at the time uh doing more yeah um he was also slated to be part of the project and um you know every entry every every cast uh actor brings in part of their own audience into a project and um that's what made ultimately a successful film because we had all these actors that people wanted to see wow. act in the film wow okay so so I mean, I'm kind of walking you through, like anybody kind of walking through, like they would do some sort of campaign. Was that the first thing you would kind of do is do like a kickstart or something to say, hey, is anybody interested in this particular project, right? Yeah. Uh, so, um, so a lot of my experience, um, I have, have had prior successful um, films before where I could specifically target an audience and hit that market and make sure that I bring value to what that audience is looking for. So going into this uh, kick, Kickstarter campaign, I planned uh, 
the for hours and hours and hours how I was gonna reach um, the people that wanted to see this type of film. And I knew there was a strong desire uh, in the Hmong community to see a really high quality film that was comparable to the content that we saw in Hollywood, but made for us as Hmong yeah. people. And uh, I think the importance of that is not only do we does it serve a you know entertainment purpose but a cultural purpose as well because it captures you know the Hmong language in a way where we can appreciate it in a different way where we didn't see it before in an artistic way and i think a lot of that gives value to not only the older generation but the younger generation to see oh that's super cool i want to be i want to be like that i want to be Hmong and uh wear armor and be cool like that so yeah. Uh, those are the kind of things I want to preserve and capture, and not a lot of people know that. Yeah, that's dude, dude. Congrats to you guys. So that's that's what was. I mean, how did you sell that? I mean, it wasn't there was no video or anything out, right? You just say, hey, you just kind of drew some writing out and say, hey, this is the idea, and this is would you guys yeah. want to fund this, and mm -hmm. we'll go through with it. I did have a lot of uh, I did do a lot of videos where I talked and explained about it. A lot of it is through posting as well as showing uh, concept arts and, uh, you know, proof of concept videos as well. So a lot of that helped contribute to show people that I was capable and my team was capable of uh, making wow. this happen. In 30 days, 56K, right? Yeah. Wow, dude. Congrats yeah. to you. Yeah. And the thing is, even though 56K sounds a lot, uh, to make a, a project at the level of, hollywood standards that's like minuscule that's like m micro budget compared to uh, hollywood consider considers one to two million budget as a micro or a small budget um so um, no I, 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 I'm, I'm okay with that i'm just saying <laughs> i'm just saying you know how like facebook facebook has their birthday donations i mean yeah. i haven't yeah. got a dollar yet or something like that you know <laughs> so yeah so like yeah. You know, for like the friends and you know families and you know people who support, you know, within that thirty day range, was able to give you that much. That's awesome. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Awesome. Uh, and that's that's the beauty uh, of it is that uh, once you have a meaningful project, uh, a lot of people would uh, come support it, and it's up to the creator to not take advantage of that. And I definitely uh, did my part in being responsible and making sure that. The funds that we did raise was put directly into the project okay cool and then all right so we rolled into that how did was there any other way to i mean was that purely just to support that movie what did you have any other way of like getting like sponsorship as well yeah we had some sponsorships but solely the project was resting on the fact that we had to make this we had to have a budget uh, that's why i use kickstarter because because some crowdfunding campaigns they allow you to take some of the funds, even though you don't make the the goal. But I wanted to make sure and prove to people that we can only make this project only if we reach the funds. Oh. Uh, because without the funds, we won't be able to build a set. We won't make be able to bring uh, Eugene over to the U.S. We won't be able to bring a professional crew equipment to film everything. Um, and the reason for that is, uh, of course, I can always beg, borrow, and steal. Uh, like how, you know, a lot of people do when they don't have a budget, they just ask for a lot of freebies. But because yeah. we, I was working with professional talent, professional crew and um, a, an idea that needed to be on that level of uh, experience, I needed to pay everyone. Um, so the simple fact is that the budget was uh, distributed out and allocated and everyone was fully paid for uh, all the way to the last dollar. Wow. And um, yeah. the sad the hard part about it is being a business person, uh, which you can probably relate to, is we take all the risk. Um, uh, I didn't, at, during the whole time, I didn't pay myself a salary or my partner a salary. We invested all of our funds into uh, this project. And uh, at the end of the day, everyone, the cast and crew and everyone was paid for, but uh, sadly, we didn't make reach the, the level of profit where. Uh, we could, uh, as business owners and uh, project owners, we couldn't pay ourselves. So at the end, we walked away with this project, with a completed project, but we didn't, weren't able to pay ourselves financially at all. Oh, gotcha. Was there, I mean, 
what was the target? I mean, just just curious, like the Kickstart target. Uh, the Kickstarter uh, target was fifty thousand. Okay, uh, so like, we so went over that. by six six thousand. But then you didn't notice that there was a there was an issue trying to get him to come over, right? No, at the time, uh, so uh, then, yeah, we didn't know if there yeah. was an issue yet. Um, so, so that added more expense for you guys to to go over. Correct, right? It, exactly, exactly. So we had to um, uh, actually pivot uh, the budget and re redo some of the budget and uh, use extra expenses to cover the the trip to Thailand to make it possible. Gotcha. And man, you said it. it you were only going to shoot for three days. Is that is that how long it takes to shoot? Is that how long did it take you to shoot in Thailand? Uh, in Thailand, it took four days. Wow. Okay. Uh, the reason why it took four days in Thailand just for the Thailand shoots is because we went over there almost blind. You know, I, I wouldn't recommend anyone doing that. Yeah. Uh, but because I, we had Eugene who was familiar with the film scene in Thailand. Uh, he was able to recommend locations and ta uh, and and some support over there. Uh, logistical support but if you go over there not knowing locations or crew and you had to do that all within one day of landing with jet lag yeah uh it's like <laughs> a uh, recipe for disaster um, yeah wow but uh, okay. we we had the experience in man or uh, knowledge and strategy to make it happen so we pulled it off within four days over there and then uh we later came back to the u.s and uh shot one day in chicago at the studio okay all right so so uh i mean you did ask if you did ask answer some of the questions so you did pay the actors along the way right yep uh every every day that they were with me they were paid for oh, okay so what how does it work in the in hollywood do they all wait until like payday when it comes out is that is that how it works uh so typically there's a um a casting fee but um since uh, we, we're not working with any uh, guilds or SAG or anything. Then uh, we just negotiate, uh, you know, freelance contracts uh, for a certain amount of days. So uh, for this project, we since the uh, project was per day, um, we negotiated a day rate that was fitting for uh, every actor oh, okay. um, that fit to their experience and skill level. Uh, so we did by day. So they were paid by day. Um, but obviously they were paid at the end of... Uh, the filming production and then oh, okay uh, yeah so okay so so they didn't get a pay like every like every week like you get a paycheck right no no, okay. no. So is that is, is that the same way how like a like a movie goes as well like if you were yeah yeah you, typically there's like 50 percent. you pay if it's like a higher uh costly actor it'll probably be like 50 percent up front uh okay. and 50 percent at the end of production oh wow okay I, I I didn't know that. I didn't know how actors were getting paid like those Hollywood movies. So yeah, yeah. okay, that's cool. Um, so um, so so along the way, you know, you guys came back. Uh, so you finished shooting what back in what June, right? Yes. Uh, so we came back at the first week of July, and then um, after that, I started editing right away. Uh, so I got the timeline wrong a little bit. We shot yeah. in Chicago first to get some. Yeah. Uh, so we we did end up filming in April as promised, but only one day, and then um, we later had to push to film the rest of it in June, near the end of June, and then we started editing right away in uh, June or okay. July. So. And then you bought what Eugene, right? Is that his name, Eugene? Yes. You bought him over to U.S. Right. Right. Yeah. Around. So. Um, we still wanted and needed to bring him over because we were going to do a whole uh, tour and promotion of it. Yeah. Um, so even though we couldn't bring him during the production process, we later uh, moved his timeline towards the end. And uh, it worked out because uh, at the end, uh, we just did a like a event tour uh, around yeah. the main states where the Hmong people were. And that's what we ended up doing, just touring. Yeah. That's kind of what I was getting at because that was amazing how you did that. That what is it? That tour was it? It was kind of targeted toward all the events. Like you guys had concerts yeah. going. What was that? Was that tour like New Year? Is that? Yeah. Yep. It was during the New Year time, um, 
it kind of yeah, fell it, in place, right? I mean, if you think about it, I mean, I don't know. Did it did it fell in place for you or? Yeah, everything just uh, as soon as we literally up to the first week of or the week before Thanksgiving is when we literally found out that his visa was confirmed. We released the information out and we literally brought, bought him a plane ticket to fly the next day over and he showed up that uh the day prior to the minnesota new year and we just went uh that thanksgiving weekend uh and toured right away it was a crazy crazy experience how everything fell into place so quickly yeah and i mean i mean this is like this is marketing like this is like advanced marketing right what you did there right i mean yeah. how did did you have like a marketing team or something like say hey you should do this you know he's here uh basically yeah. me and my partner was the marketing team <laughs> we <laughs> oh, we had ideas in place yeah um, and it was up to me and my partner to uh, figure out logistically how to make it work and it took a lot of uh reaching out to a lot of people so uh, you know even though we can say that we strateg strategized it um uh, the the real reason why it came into place was because everyone came in support of our project everyone every organization uh from milwaukee to minnesota um but you had to, to reach out that's what i'm saying you had to reach out to them which yeah. was like amazing yeah. itself you know you, i mean i haven't seen anybody done this kind of stuff but you went out reached out i think there was time when you guys had a concert there was a concert and he was part of it right Yes. Yes. And you guys did the, uh, you guys did the, I guess a promo at the, I mean at the New Year, whatever it is, right? So that means yep. you, guys had a, you guys had a booth there, right? Yeah. And then yes. uh, what else? What else did you guys do? You guys did TV stations? Yeah, we also did Hmong TV stations as well. I mean, that's that's just like you. I mean, you 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 had balls to <laughs> to reach out to TV stations. Hey, we want to do something. I mean. Uh, how, how did you do all this? I mean, you, you got to have connections and stuff. What did you, how, how did you do all this? Yeah, basically, you know, I did have my connections in place already to execute. So definitely have like the foundational uh, level in place. Uh, just don't go out, out of blue. So definitely there was a lot of preparation ahead of time. So it, although it may seem like a lot of luck as well, uh, but it's just uh, preparation meets the right time, you know and uh preparing you, you had these uh, my career for this moment led to you know the success of the tour and the finished pro product and everything so uh everything everyone may say like oh um you uh you were just lucky but you know i i want to contribute to um it's the hard working uh team my partner definitely uh and uh, the cast and crew for pulling everything together well, what whatever took place, that was amazing because I was following you guys during that tour, you know, just just through Facebook, you know. I was like, man, this guy's like he's blowing up the feed, you know. Um, that itself was amazing. So uh kudos to you guys. Um, so did that I mean, did you see that help when when you did the promo with them, did did it help produce any income at all? Did you like did you say, Hey, you do this? Hey, would you guys like to donate? Did you ask? Was there an ask? back yeah yeah uh there definitely was the point of that whole promotion was to keep continually build uh the revenue and the the income to support the project and um everything led to uh uh to uh, like to another so uh minnesota wisconsin we went to minnesota first and then uh wisconsin and then california next uh as a last thing in december um just kind of following like the Hmong new year setup yeah. so since Hmong New Year in Minnesota was in Thanksgiving, we did that first. And then right. Hmong New Year in Wisconsin was in uh, the first or second week of uh, um, yeah. December. So we did that. And then after that, we moved to California. So uh, we definitely were successful in making sure that we were uh, great all the way through. It was only until uh, I knew nothing about California at the time. Um, so I didn't have that was my only downfall was not knowing California. Um, so we were. I knew Minnesota and Wisconsin very well, um, but um, and we were successful in that. But the moment we went into California, our expenses just skyrocketed, and that took away that pretty much set us to break even at that point. 
Oh, what happened in California? Was it? Uh, like- so it was logistics. Uh, like uh, we didn't know people to stay at, or you know, uh, we had to pay Airbnb, flight tickets of all that cast and crew. So we brought like uh, I think five to six people. So all the flight tickets for that, and travel renting cars, and traveling to uh, Sacramento, Merced, and Fresno. Uh, we just did too much in California. Uh, we hit three cities in California and we needed uh, logistics behind like gotcha. yeah. logic and everything. So all that ate up all of the the profits that we made in Minnesota and Wisconsin. Um, and because what we wanted to, or we intended to do was hopefully California can help sustain, but it was just uh, the fact that we didn't know much about how much value California can bring in. We kind of over expected it. Um, Oh, gotcha. okay, cool. So, all right. Um, so as far as, I mean, you, you guys, the, the, the movie itself was, was, was paid, right? You had to pay to watch it as well, right? Did that generate enough revenue as well? No. So that's the, that's the myth, uh, be- behind video on demand is that, oh, if we set it online, people are going to pay for it and watch it. But in reality, it was more so just to kind of, uh, bring a premium value to, um, to people want to support and to also gain demographic data and value behind what, what you see. So people appreciate, your film or product more if they're willing to pay for it and believe it or not if you set it out for free then people will see it as a lesser value yeah. so uh to make a product valuable we had to put a price point on it and i think we were pretty fair with uh with such a uh a, a like a specialized product for just for the Hmong people yeah. um uh with that kind of value behind it i think um that was a great starting point. I think there is um, a value behind that, but um, I think moving forward, um, it's going to definitely the ep- episodes are going to be in line with what research and data we captured from uh, that launch on video on demand. So, um, so how much was it? I forget. It was like a few bucks. It was like less than $10. Wasn't it? Uh, yeah, it was like a five, $5, five dollars for yeah. four ninety nine or around there. Yeah. Okay. Did you, did you want to say how much it was total <laughs> what total, total? You, how much how much revenue yeah yeah for that was it a lot um it was only uh, around like a thousand to like oh, 1200 wow. so it wasn't anything crazy i was expecting a lot more support than that um, yeah yeah it was that's that's a misconception because it's so popular uh people miss equate popularity from what people are actually willing to pay and contribute yeah um so that's the a lot of things is people wanted did say they wanted to support but when it actually came down to it there wasn't a lot of financial support and that's the only way to sustain any project is to have financial support you know uh when people say don't just say you're going to support but vote with your dollars that's what they mean when when you vote for your dollars you financially you say that okay i want to see more of this and make it happen wow dude a thousand that was not a lot i mean what's a thousand divided by let me just do a quick math here you know Mm -hmm. yeah it's it's like math but you know five dollars that's like what 200 people pretty much yeah yeah i just say okay i'll sign up just to support these guys um Mm -hmm. wow so okay is that is that normal in industry is that is that what you're hearing too uh so yeah so on a larger scale in the let's say a level above the mall audience is the independent films um so with vod and all the streaming services it is pennies on the dollar uh that people get back so it's um so from what i've experienced at the smallest scale uh level compared to what other independent filmmakers are making as well it's pretty similar ratio if you just not think in terms of the amount but just ratio um then a lot of independent filmmakers do they they don't make a lot uh in the vod or streaming industry they what where they make money is through uh selling rights through different territories in different countries and regions and that's where most of the money comes from oh dude okay that's how oh i see okay i get it um rights to rights to show that 
right video right yeah licensing fees and all those things is is what's like the the main bulk of and also like theatrical um uh, is also important but nowadays um uh theatrical is more like a marketing uh aspect if you view releasing a film in theaters is more viewed as like a marketing tactic now more so like revenue generating because of the the downward um trend of people not going to the movie theaters anymore really wow yeah, yeah. so it's not the it's not the the box office the first few days of box office whatever that's just marketing it's the what happens afterwards like how are we gonna like dvds and stuff like that or yeah, the, yeah. uh that's what makes disney so profitable you know it's it's not the film they make the film but then it's the products that they make out of it like the stuffed animals the toys the ancillary products that come around posters everything that's what makes the real money gotcha you need to make some toys make some make some, <laughs> make some of those swords Duplicate yeah swords. definitely for sure <laughs> yeah 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 bro so that's cool man you guys have any questions those you guys are watching appreciate you guys are watching uh give us a thumbs up uh if you guys like this um so um so Dude, there were so many ways how I was watching you uh, create income. So I didn't know about the kickstart, right? So you did the mm -hmm. kickstart. Uh, you did uh, fundraising through, I think you did like a big showing fundraising, right? Like in Milwaukee or something. Yeah, like that. yeah we did. We had our own uh, red carpet events Yeah, as well. How much was that? Was that like uh, was a few? How much um, per person on that? Uh, for those... Um, like i don't want to disclose too much on those because that oh, was yeah, like yeah, yeah. Like, uh, charge, a bit too like them. it's kind of crazy and it has a lot of like partners we had involved so gotcha. that but, i won't be able to talk but okay so you charge for that uh people to walk in and come watch it uh i think you you guys did photo, photo ops right mm -hmm. uh and then you did i think you guys did t-shirts and stuff like that didn't you yeah yeah we did t-shirts as well um one of the t-shirts that i am wearing right now is uh um uh, like a Mon king shirt by yeah. uh like uh, fresh imprints uh, and they're a local business mong business in uh, milwaukee and uh, they support us early on the kickstarter so that that was one of the early shirts that you could get from the kickstarter rewards um so i just want to give a quick shout out for them because they definitely helped contribute on the success of that kickstarter as well cool uh, and then we later teamed up with um uh uh mong uh mong threads um okay. to make uh, the rest of the spirit beside me t-shirts okay cool and then uh i mean what i mean out of all that what what created the most revenue to, to um definitely so the thing about Hmong people is we love showing up in person and enjoying our time with each other socializing and yeah. gathering and so um a lot of it was doing events um that was the, the main success of uh, driving everything forward is the, uh, letting people see Eugene, our, uh, Ashore and Vanessa and uh, Elvis and uh, everybody, uh, and Guli. Yeah. Uh, and that just helped contribute to, um, you know, uh, people wanting to show up, uh, pay tickets, and uh, just have a good time, and uh, so that was our main factor in uh, the success of helping push us forward. So, w would you think that like showing up at the New Year's and stuff, sharing your own booth, is that you think that's profitable, or is that just marketing? Just, just uh, that, that for that was just marketing for us. Uh, we wanted people to be able to see us and say, "Hey, we have an event going on." So, basically, we used the the booths as a way to push people to our events okay. and have a good time there oh okay oh i see what no, that's that's a great idea bro yeah. <laughs> <That's Yeah. awesome. laughs> so so the minnesota one so you guys did a booth at the minnesota i oh, i forget what you guys call it it was like the the center or whatever it is right? yeah yeah was and what was the event what was the event at minnesota uh that event was um so i think we we were we had an event prior to that but then um the event there was to say hey uh we have a red carpet event in milwaukee um so that's that's where uh, everything was being pushed and then we also did uh like sh different showings with uh -huh. different we uh we showed up at the chat events there as well okay 
the the chat chat bin? yeah what is yeah. that chat is like a Hmong organization for i think creatives or um professionals to uh network oh, okay uh, yeah so oh, okay cool yeah Dude, that's so, so at the end of the day, right? So I guess we're we're kind of wrapping up to all my questions. If you guys do have any questions, you know, hit me up. Uh, I do have some, but we'll skip some of those. Those are pretty mean. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, um, so at the end of the day, all that fun, right? Um, was it Poffero? At the end, uh, so we uh, we came out. Uh, just break even uh, at the end of everything. Um, so, like I said, we broke even. When I say break even, I don't mean like I was being I was compensated and my partner was compensated and that that's it. So, uh, when I say break even, the total cost of doing the film and uh, touring around all totaled up to be uh, break even. So, uh, our my investment and my partner's investment uh, was lost. So. Um, if you say in those terms, then we yeah. actually lost money. Um, but in terms of uh, the project itself, then it broke even. Okay, cool. So yeah. where is this project heading toward? I guess that was one of the questions earlier. Yeah, um, so I see one of the questions there is like, what's one of the long-term plans for the project and uh, how am I pushing towards it? Yeah. Uh, the long-term plans is to definitely finish out uh, the storyline and series, um, at least get to the first season. Um, once we finish the first season, that would dictate to s and show me like how much value it's going to bring and how much interest people are still interested in it and want to see a, a end product. And that's where, you know, with every, even in um, uh, Hollywood standards, what they do is they do the first season. And then uh, if it's uh, good enough, then they'll, write a check for uh to fund production for the second season um so uh the first season definitely sets a tone on how much uh value we bring in how much people want to see it and if it's profitable we can use those profits to reinvest into the the second season um so uh right now i'm still uh developing the the first season and making sure that everything is uh perfected and uh, set uh, well and uh, to make sure that we have the resources available so right now uh, everything is uh, still progressing uh, creatively but uh, as far as like a resources standpoint I haven't reached out to any investors yet so um, I'm just waiting for the right timing and a lot of it's due to delays through like you know deployment and then also now COVID um, so pretty much we're just waiting to make sure that uh once covid is over we could just launch our pro uh, projects cool so um are you guys planning going back to thailand on that no um so the reason why i moved to california is because um uh early 2019 um i was planning to move to california uh for the simple mindset of you know completing this project so that's why i moved over here uh, but then I, I got deployed, so I didn't move yet. So when, as soon as I got back, I'm uh, then I set out on my same plan that I had was to move to California and finish filming Spirit Beside Me here. So um, the great thing about California is that it has so many fantasy, great landscapes, um, style, area locations. Um, and um, uh, I will say this for the audience that is watching. Uh, you get a little insight of what my thought process is. The setting of Spirit Beside Me is going to be a version of the Bay Berkeley area. And it's just beautiful. And um, with that said, there's going to be a lot of uh, landscape type locations that's really out of this world that we may go to Northern California and Oregon to shoot. But that's the whole reason I moved out here was so that I can fully contribute and focus all my resources into finishing spirit beside me. So a lot of the people that doubt me and, and say that I'm not going to finish the project. I moved to California to be closer to Hollywood so I could bring that value to finish spirit beside me. So uh, if you, if you question my dedication, you yeah. don't know my work and where, um, where I hold my words at. So no, that's awesome. You moved there just to, 
to find these locations, right? I guess. Yeah. You know. yep. To get from more familiar with California. Yeah. I wanted to get first hands on experience of the locations. The only the best place to get to know your area is to to move there. So I moved here and um, you know, I found the locations that I wanted. And yeah. uh as soon as COVID is is in the clear and uh the budget is in, we're gonna start filming Spirit Beside Me. So that so that was that was his other question is what is the whole <laughs> season project cost i want to know too right like what what do you have that in mind and what is the budget is there a budget uh, so i won't give an exact number um yeah. but it's upwards in the million wow dude okay so all right it's, it better be crazy like all this <laughs> stuff going on and everything right so all right up in the millions I, I don't know i mean you did pretty well right with that what you got so far right like, from the kickstarter yeah stuff. definitely with the with the micro budget, we definitely uh, push stretch the budget as best as we can to make a believable, somewhat believable uh, fantasy. I I do want to say that the pilot episode um, is about fifty percent of my full vision that I had in mind. There was a lot more that I wanted to do, but obviously with obstacles and uh, uh, setbacks, I had to rewrite some things to make it work. Okay cool so there you guys go he's not done yet with that particular mm -hmm. drama i guess you guys call it drama or series or yeah drama series <laughs> yeah so there you guys go so um any what's what do you got lined up i mean is that is that what you got lined up or are you got any other projects lined up uh yeah um working on this project and also uh a feature film a, a major independent feature film uh that i'm writing as well so i'm writing a couple projects um, like I said, I have a, a team on standby for the feature film. So I'm hopefully working with uh, great talent for that too, that are, are pretty well known that uh, if I say a few names, uh, you guys will all know those names are, but I'm not going to reveal that yet. <laughs> is this like Hong related or? No, this is uh, uh, like an Asian American film, I would say. Asian American. You, uh, I saw a picture of you in, uh, who is that Asian dude? From, James uh, Hong, yeah, it was it the, yeah. uh, from Big Trouble in Little China. Yep, yep. So um, <laughs> I, uh, he's he's like a, <laughs> a personal friend of mine too. So uh, you know, expect hopefully, um, yeah, I will reveal that maybe that he might be in this film. Maybe. Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> dude, that is so cool, man. I watched that movie like I don't know hundreds of times, dude. That that is so cool. When I saw you had a picture of him. I was like, dude, you met the dude, you know, the, <laughs> the evil dude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's cool. So, hey, man, I want to appreciate you. Uh, uh, thanks you for coming up, you know, here explaining out the movie. I was a big fan when you were doing this, um, this campaign tour or whatever it is. Back in 2018, I was watching you were you were creating all this attention. You know, I knew you were probably, you know, getting paid, but uh, it's good to know what happened. So, you know, and to feed out this information. So you got any uh, young bucks here that are trying to do something. Hopefully they can learn from what you've gone through. And uh, thanks for being a home hustler, bro. Uh, thanks for being a hustler and, and uh, being here and explaining to us what you did and what took place. So uh, appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for uh, having me on uh, on your show. All right. So we got one last question that we usually ask all our guests is, you know, if you had a billion dollars, you know, What's the first two things you would do? <laughs> uh, the first two things would uh, most definitely uh, invest into uh, you know uh, the project uh, that I had in mind, and that would definitely be just be an easy way of. I wouldn't say e money doesn't make things easier, but it definitely helps. Um, so uh, that's what I would do. And uh, secondly, um, then definitely you know uh, make sure that. I have a, a great house and, you know, car and everything. So just personal uh, expenses paid for and uh, typical things that we all do. Uh, so that's definitely what two things that I would do. Wait, let me make it. The first thing is to to invest in the stuff that you want. What is that again? Uh, which is the uh, the production that uh, oh, wow. just like that's that's all I want to do is just that's put everything dollars. into. <laughs> yeah, that's part of it. That's just part of it, you know. Wow. Uh, and then the, the the other thing, you know, I have other ideas. Film isn't the only thing that my interest is in. Yeah. Uh, but 
I'm definitely out there in my 10 year plan. So a uh, billion dollars is definitely gonna help that. I'm not ready to reveal what my other plans are outside of film, but eventually um, there'll be more news about that. But That's awesome. for now, I'm just focused on film. That's awesome. So even with a billion dollars, you still wanna do what you wanna do, which is filmmaking. Create, yeah, just create. Yeah, <laughs> creating content, whatever it is with uh, the, you know, and just have a good life. You know, good house and a good car. That's awesome. That's a simple life right there, bro. Yeah. That's awesome. So, all right. Appreciate, you know, you coming on. Uh, guys, give them a thumbs, thumbs up, you know, for coming on the show. And uh, everybody, have a, everybody have a good night. So, I uh, appreciate it. Uh, all right. Keep, keep hustling, guys. Keep hustling. Good night, guys. Good night.